Juan Mendez. Thank you so much. Well, so first, I want to apologize. I've been sitting out there the whole time, and the second I get up to go talk to somebody, it's my turn. So, I have been having an amazing time at this conference. Uh, so first, I want to get a little bit of thank yous out of the way. Uh, this is a very welcoming community. Right? This is my first American Atheist convention, but... But I recognize so many of you from all different kinds of atheists and secular conventions. And the conversations I've shared with you, the support you guys have given me, has been really overwhelming. It's no other way. I would not be having as much fun as I am being an open atheist politician without, your, without this community. So thank you. Oh, I also need to thank, uh, sorry, uh, Don Lacey, the Arizona State Director for the American Atheists, Amanda Kniff with American Atheists, who's been very generous with her advice and her expertise for leaderships in, for leadership, pe uh, people in leadership, the Arizona Secular Movement, and then the uh, Secular Student Alliance, which is one of the largest organizing forces in Arizona, and, and, and in my district, which is really important to me, and, and then a uh, uh, another thank you to all the bloggers. My story would not be as big, it would not have been shared across the world without people like J.D. Eberhardt and every blogger that's been helping me. So I want to make sure you guys get all the support you get. And for some reason, my mouse is not working. So, uh, let's see. So many of you have already heard the story of how I wandered into the media spotlight for giving an atheist invocation on the floor of the Arizona State House of Representatives. Uh, and in fact, the staff at the American Atheist was incredible in their rapid response and support. So, so really, I need to thank all of you again for, for that. Uh, but but there, there's, mu there's much more, right? Uh, the behind the scenes story about how this happened and, and why we were success successful in shifting the way that atheism is politically regarded in Arizona. And, and that's what I want to talk to you guys about, is uh, I believe it's important that, that we have that broader context and how our story happened. Right? Because the giant strides atheists are able to take, uh, are able to take right now, and, and those will be able to take very soon, those successes are not attributable, are attributable to lone leaders, but are dependent on an organized movement that can surround and support our leaders and can give us uh, direction, wisdom, and political cover. Right? So in the two years before my invocation, existing Arizona chapters and affiliates of organizations like American Atheists, Freedom From Religion Foundation, the Secular Student Alliance, and, and others did the groundbreaking work of creating the first state affiliate of the Secular Coalition. Right? So Secular Coalition Arizona started growing non-theistic communities and organizing secular voters in my state. Secular Arizona, uh, Secular Coalition of Arizona, were, they were showing up everywhere at rallies, city councils across the state and at the legislature, right, to, indu to introduce elected officials to atheists and to demand that leaders in positions of political power, uh, that they honor the Constitution, right, and its clear insistence on a secular government. Our community was garnering positive press for standing against religionists and government, while at the same time we were standing alongside politically vulnerable groups of people who've been marginalized by powerful religious interests. Right, so leaders in the, in the atheist movement were able to help, we were able to do a lot, we were able to have a big impact in Arizona, right? We've, they've helped me uh, amend bad legislation, they had email campaigns that flooded my colleagues' inbox, inboxes every time secular government was in, was in jeopardy, right? The Secular Coalition of Arizona's lobbyists became a go-to contact for the press, for legislators, for all, all different people on matters of religious intrusion in secular government. Other organizations affected by the breach in the wall of the separation uh, reached out to, to our community for help. The secular movement began working regularly with our labor, uh, labor unions in Arizona, the AC, uh, with, also with ACLU, with Planned Parenthood Advocates of Arizona, with Arizona's Pro-Choice NARAL, and Equality Arizona. So we started building relationships and par partnerships with all those kinds of groups. Atheist activists were being invited to speak all across the state not just to debate creationists at religious schools and not to talk to other atheists, but rather to address all kinds of groups, right? Political caucuses, women's groups, interfaith communities, military veterans. So we're building this coalition. 
And in 2013, the Secular Coalition for Arizona headlined at one of the largest events at the Capitol lawn on the opening day at the legislature, right? The crowd of, it was a, it was a woman, it was a pro, pro women's rights, and the crowd of women's rights advocates went wild in support as an unapologetic, non-theistic spoke about the importance of the atheist movement in combating religiously motivated legislation. That year, that's the year that I came out as politically as an atheist. Again, what I want to make clear is that I wouldn't have been able to do it. I wouldn't have felt comfortable doing it without this community. Right? And, and that climate existed because of the hard work and resources people in our movement invested nationally and in my state. And because of the personal and political risks taken by the brave men and women who advocated for inclusion before me. So in 2013, when I was scheduled to take my turn leading the opening prayer on the floor of the House, I knew who to talk to. I'd been introduced to the secular community because they had a full-time lobbyist who was consistently interacting with our legislators and making sure we were connected to our non-theistic constituents. I called the Secular Coalition of Arizona and together we crafted a strategy to draw attention to how the prayer in the legislature was itself a way for the religious majority to marginalize minority voices. Rather than offer a sectarian prayer, I wanted to authentically express the beauty and morality of my humanist worldview in a way that honored all Arizonans regardless of religion. In my invocation, I simply ask that instead of bowing our heads, we ought to look around the room at every man and woman sharing together this extraordinary experience of being alive and of dedicating ourselves to working towards improving the lives of the people of our state. I ask that we cherish and celebrate our shared humanness, our shared capacity for reason and for compassion, our shared love of the people of our state, for our constitution and for our democracy. And I ended by calling on our fellow lawmakers to root all our policymaking processes in values that are relevant to all Arizonans, regardless of religious belief or non-belief. We didn't really know what the response might look like. Right? My colleagues warned me about the potential devastating political fallout. I was told there'd be polls demonstrating that atheists were less trusted than rapists. I'd heard stories of courageous students like Jessica Alquest, whose atheist activism resulted in horrible prejudices and threats. But here's what happened, right? With, with the exception of one of my colleagues who took a point of personal privilege to lead the house in an extra do-over prayer to repent <laughs> for my non-prayer. Besides that one guy, 100% of the response that I've received have been totally positive, right? I, So it, it, it's one thing that I, I didn't get one angry phone call, not one crazy email, but I got thousands of emails from you guys, thousands of thank yous. Uh, I was quickly learning how, how many people around the country had been feeling disenfranchised from civic engagement and social justice work because they didn't see their values articula articulated by their government representatives, right? their, their community leaders, their neighbors, or their friends. The, the national media attention around the indication I offered provided a kind of representation that our secular community had been so hungry for. And, and in, the, in the same week, people saw national coverage of uh, the Pope's remarks right, about overlooking religious differences to focus on good works, and, and the humble admission on national television of Rebecca Vitsum, a uh, tornado survivor, that, that she's an atheist. Right? So this incredible media around all these events gave all of us unprecedented poss possibilities. We suddenly had a national platform, an opportunity, and I, I believe a responsibility to speak openly and authentically about our atheism, right, in an engaging and inspiring way. Our movement did that, and I'm not surprised, but I know we can go a lot further, right? This year, the big news at the, at, in the Arizona legislature, uh, or the big news story about atheism, is that it isn't a story. Right? I've said the words humanist, atheist, secular, countless times in committees, floor debates, vote explanations. No one bats an eye anymore. I gave another uh, atheist invocation this year when, when I was scheduled to pray, but I wasn't alone. Many of, many of my colleagues dipped their toes in the secular pool as well. Representative Stephanie Mock, 
took a point of personal privilege to introduce and celebrate students, staff, and board members from the Secular Student Alliance who were watching up in the gallery. Representative Ruben Gallego, our assistant minority leader, offered an inclusive prayer based on the golden rule. And he asked that the legislature focus on doing good regardless of their religious belief. Uh, Representative Mark Gardenas uh, offered a short prayer from the Book of Psalms, but, but then proceeded the prayer with a disclaimer that in part said that he was here to represent all of Arizonans, regardless of whether or not they shared his religion. And, and that he, while he wanted to share a prayer from his Catholic tradition, he didn't want to presume that he was praying for everyone, right? So we're gaining a lot of traction. And in an Arizona, we have sitting legislators and new candidates seeking endorsements from the Secular Coalition from Arizona, and they're asking about the Free Thought Pack, which has endorsed me earlier this year. So even in Arizona, right, we're not shying away from the secular movement. We're standing together, more people are joining us, and despite my own and my colleagues' connection to the secular movement, we're going to get reelected. Right. Now, for about three years, the secular community was represented at the Arizona legislature by humanist activist Sarah Blaine. Right? She did a great job for the organization, but had never been a professional lobbyist. She was a community organizer, someone who stepped up because someone had to. Right? And when she left, and actually now she's, she's actually running a congressional campaign in Arizona for James Woods, a humanist who's even been on an FFR board, billboard and is making secular government part of his platform. So when Sarah left, she, she left to continue blazing trails for humanism. There wasn't a crisis, and when she left, there wasn't a crisis to find a qualified lobbyist to continue, continue advocating for secularism and atheism in, in Arizona. Mainstream political advocates wanted to work for our community, and they got excited about representing us to the legislature. So currently, Secular Coalition of Arizona is now con contracting with two well-respected lobbyists who are both atheists themselves and whose other clients include veteran groups, mainstream interests, or medical interests, and retirees. So in Arizona, being openly non-theistic can sometimes still carry with it both social and political risk, but we're not marginal, right? Our voices are being welcomed into the public discourse. And, in, in, and that positive aspect of political culture in Arizona exists and will soon exist in many other states across the country. Because if it can exist in Arizona, then it should be able to exist in your state. <laughs> especially in those states that have been written off to the religious right, right? The opposition voices being raised by our, our movement through organizations like American Atheists, through FFRF, Americans United for the Separation of Church and State, and the Secular Coalition, these opposition voices are resonating with the constituency no longer content to sit idly by while religionalists deconstruct the Enlightenment values articulated in our Constitution, particularly when the harm to the LGBT community, to women, to non-believers, to religious minorities, to children, the harm to these and other politically vulnerable groups is so very clear. So while there remains many places where those of us who are atheists take a bold risk when we authentically declare who we are, the strength of our numbers, our passion for truth, the good character with which we, with which we conduct ourselves, and the value we offer to our community, these things are no longer unnoticed. I'm absolutely certain that we are going to achieve the kind of society in which equality and worth are no longer dependent on religious belief. <laughs> Where labeling ourselves with the word atheist comes with a badge of respect, with truth and courage, rather than the stigma of self-righteousness and depravity where the free marketplace of ideas is finally free enough to receive the subversive notion that living in reality has merit. <laughs> right? that, that seeking to understand our universe as it is, in it all its beauty and harshness, is far more noble and empowering than letting superstition and fear dictate the course of human history and, and our own individual lives. Right? We're, being, we're being open and honest about our atheism, raises our esteem in the eyes of our friends, neighbors, and families, and colleagues rather than being met with a social and political tax so high that many of us cannot bear it and, and instead choose to hide who we are. 
We are so close to that era of equality that the time for debating whether or not we will get there is over. Our conversation must now shift to what roles and responsibilities we want for ourselves when, when we finally arrive, because it's time for us to take, on, to take on those responsibilities now. This shift will not end the, necess the necessity for the protest culture in which American atheists has traditionally been rooted. We will continue to need bold insistence on the truth that underpins our freedom and our autonomy. We will need courageous leadership around challenges like climate change, poverty, and human rights. But we cannot meet these challenges if our solutions are grounded in religious fantasy rather than uh, reality as we can best understand it. We cannot, we cannot, we, we have no real hope if, we are, if we're denied access to truth because religion clouds our culture and dangerously our science curriculum. Atheist protest culture has an essential role in our future, but the focal point of our protest must take seriously the plain fact that atheism's protest against theism will soon be outdated. The whole world is winning that fight, and obviously we'll still need to see it through, but let's also dream bigger. Let's go further than atheism. Let's think clearly about the world in which we find ourselves today, but comport ourselves knowing we're about to be leaders into a future where atheism is the norm. Right. The atheist worldview will be heard and taken seriously. What do we want to be saying when the world begins listening to us? Let's speak those words now. Who and what do we want to be advocating for when the whole world begins paying attention to our activism? Let's take on that activism now. Who do, how do we want to behave when those around us begin modeling our character? Let's conduct ourselves with that character now. We must boldly go to, towards the future of atheism knowing that it fits and starts sometimes with painful slowness and sometimes with tsunami-like momentum. People are going to look around and notice there are atheists everywhere. What will they see? American atheist has a unique history of boldness and courage, courage of rejecting social norms that are incompatible with societal well-being, of encouraging all of us to refuse to write ourselves off or to accept the tyranny of the majority. In this unique, in, in this historical unique position, American atheists. And in, I'm sorry, in this history, uniquely positioned American atheists to go beyond atheism. When Madeleine Murray O'Hare filed suit to end compulsory Bible readings and the harassment at her son's school, her famous opening statement before the Supreme Court hinted at what I'm advocating for. Right? She used protest language defining atheism in opposition to religious belief, but she went, but she went, she went much further to talk about the vision atheists have for our lives. She said, in, in, I've amended some of her language for gender inclusiveness, but an atheist loves humanity instead of God. An atheist believes that heaven is something for which we should work now, here on earth, for all of us together to enjoy. An atheist believes that we can get no help through prayer, but that we must find in ourselves the inner conviction and strength to meet life, to grapple with it, to subdue it, and to enjoy it. An atheist strives for an involvement in life and not escape into death. We want disease conquered, poverty vanquished, and war eliminated. We want an ethical way of life. We believe that we are our brother's keeper and our sister's keeper, and our keepers of our own lives. That we, are, that we are responsible persons, and the job is here and the time is now. These words, penned more than 50 years ago, resonate even more powerfully today. There is no doubt the time is now. With all the courage and strength that are the defining char characteristics of this organization and those of us that American Atheist represents, the time is now to truly take on the, res the roles and responsibilities entitled in our atheism, in, keeping our, in being our brother and sister's keeper and in the keeper of our own lives. The time is now to conquer disease. Right? It is unconscionable that in 2014, people are still physically diminished by preventable diseases and disability while we recoil against providing universal health care that ought to be understood as a basic human right. Yeah. The time is now to vanquish the prison of poverty that crushes the human spirit, distorts human perception around what is even possible for us, and fragments the human family into, into distinct classes of privileges and of want. The time is now to eliminate war, 
which is an insult to human ingen ingenuity. A, a sickening waste of individuals' lives and whole communities, a destroyer of land, lives, and our best hopes for our future. The time is now to lead the movement, the, the movement in, in boldly towards that ethical way of life where we are responsible for a freer, fairer, more joyful world for ourselves and each other. So I'm so grateful for the work people here and before us have done to prepare for this great moment in history where, the, where this world can be possible, where we're able to advance a message of reason, compassion, and equality to build meaningful communities that are rooted in a love of the human experience rather than hierarchical power, hierarchical power schemes and superstition. To create a culture that makes it possible for me and other elected officials to talk openly about our atheism. As people around us begin waking up to the reality that atheists are everywhere, as they begin seeing all of us here, let's make sure they see strong champions of humanity. Let's make sure they see activists for feminism, environmentalism, human dignity, and real liberty and justice for all. Let's make sure we are conducting ourselves with a character centered on safeguarding the infinite precious dignity of all humanity. I guess I want to end by saying that we are all responsible persons, and so the job is, the job is here and the job is now. So thank you. <laughs>